On December 31st, Donald Trump said his dream was for peace, specifically in the Middle East. And then on January 2nd, he did this. This is CNN Breaking News. Our breaking news tonight is huge. A rocket attack on the Baghdad airport kills Iran's most revered military leader and a senior official in Iraq's paramilitary forces. Now, the Pentagon announced tonight that the attack was a U.S. airstrike. Sweet Jesus. Donald Trump ordered the killing of Iran's top general. What happened to peace, huh? When most people break their resolutions, they eat ice cream instead of working out. This guy rained down fire on these mother He ate ice cream while doing it. <laughs> now, despite... Despite... That's a real thing. He ate ice cream while it was happening. He's like, mmm. <laughs> now, despite all the instant experts on social media suddenly tweeting about Soleimani, the truth is, for most Americans, Iran's top general was far from a household name, right? The only Iranian leaders most people know are the Ayatollah and the Iron Sheik. It's a very broad range. <laughs> but don't get it twisted. Don't let it... Don't get it twisted. For Iranians... General Soleimani was as big as it gets. Qasem Soleimani was no ordinary general. The U.S. officially classified him as a terrorist, but in Iran, he was a national hero. This morning, the entire region on edge. Iran vowing retaliation amid fears the two nations are on the brink of an all-out war. <laughs> Funeral processions, unlike anything seen in decades, are continuing this morning. President Trump and Iran are also dangerously trading very serious threats of war. A commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guard said his country has 35 U.S. targets in its crosshairs, ready to pull the trigger. President Trump tweeted over the weekend, the U.S. has 52 targets identified, including cultural sites in Iran. Okay, you have to admit this is wild. Trump kills Iran's top general. And then when Iran threatens to retaliate, Trump says, you better not, or I'll destroy your culture. Yeah, what's next? He's just gonna send a text like, oh, you think you're crazy? Well, I'm loco, S.A. <laughs> now, first of all, destroying cultural sites is probably a war crime. You can't do that, right? Because according to the Geneva Convention, in war, the things you destroy are supposed to be for the purpose of the war, not just to be dicks. But secondly, there is no way Trump knows anything about Iranian cultural sites, okay? <laughs> In fact, if Iranians are smart, they'll use this to their advantage just to get Trump to get rid of stuff that they don't want. They'd be like, please, Mr. Trump, don't destroy our most cherished cultural landmark, that karaoke bar next to my house that stays open till 3 a.m. <laughs> don't do it, Donald! <laughs> so now, the United States and Iran are on the brink of war, but the killing of Iran's general has a ripple effect across the entire Middle East. The death of Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad ignited a new chapter of regional tensions. American allies in the region are preparing for possible retaliation and are on high alert. So are American forces, with 9,000 in the region and 3,000 extra preparing to deploy. The State Department issued an urgent warning overnight telling all Americans in Iraq to leave the country immediately. The Pentagon announced that the U.S. has paused its efforts in the fight against ISIS due to a need to protect U.S. troops in the region. Iraq's parliament voted to kick out the 5,000 U.S. troops in the country. President Trump fired back, telling reporters if Iraq does force U.S. troops to leave, he'll make Iraq pay for money the United States spent in Iraq to build an expensive airbase. We're not leaving unless they pay us back for it, he said. Okay, guys, I don't know, but I think it's safe to say that this thing's not going according to plan. <laughs> because you realize now, America is sending more troops to the Middle East. And also, how is Trump gonna flat out refuse to leave someone else's country, right? He would be the worst Airbnb tenant of all time. <laughs> yeah, just writing a review like, I burned myself cooking meth in your kitchen, so I'm not leaving until you give me my money back. <laughs> now, you might be wondering, how could this well-thought-out plan to assassinate an Iranian general turn out so chaotically? Well, maybe it's because this plan wasn't so well-thought-out after all. After the president saw the protests at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad and blamed Iran, aides presented the president with a variety of options. Top American military officials put the option of killing him on the menu they presented to President Trump. Military leaders were stunned when President Trump decided to kill Soleimani, top brass viewing his death as the most extreme option they presented to the president. Okay, now, I know this might not be a popular opinion, but this is where I don't blame Trump. Pentagon officials gave Trump a menu of options. 
but then they were shocked when he chose the most extreme one? <laughs> Get the f- out of here, man. <laughs> you were shocked. Have you seen Trump's apartment? What part of his life makes you think he's ever gonna pick middle of the road options, huh? <laughs> if you don't want Trump to pick something, why'd you give him the option in the first place? Donald Trump will always pick the most extreme option on a menu, whether it's a military strike or KFC. He's always gonna pick the most extreme thing. He'd be like, yes, I'll have the meat lover's explosion with extra bacon served in a kiddie pool of ranch dressing. (laughs) They'd be like, sir, uh, we don't actually have that. That's just like a publicity stunt. He's like, that sounds like a you problem. (laughs) And no lettuce. (laughs) So now, because of Trump's extreme decision, the world is in a state of panic. Because, like, the truth is no one really knows what's gonna happen next. Nobody. We could be on the brink of war, World War III, or the whole thing could just fizzle out, like the beef between Nick Cannon and Eminem. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of people don't know, but uh, Jared Kushner actually brokered that peace deal. Yeah, (laughs) he does stuff. So we don't know what's gonna happen, but the question on everyone's mind is, why would Donald Trump even bring everybody to this point? Why do something so risky? Why now? Nobody knows. If only there was a wise man, some wise man in 2011 who could have predicted why this would be happening today. Our president will start a war with Iran because he has absolutely no ability to negotiate. He's weak and he's ineffective. So the only way he figures that he's going to get reelected and as sure as you're sitting there is to start a war with Iran, I believe, that he will attack Iran sometime prior to the election because he thinks that's the only way he can get elected. Isn't it pathetic? He's right. It definitely is. 